All right, we got a fun one um, for this problem. It's a uh, 343 from the Young and Friedman University Physics book. A test rocket starts from re rest at point A, launched along, or sorry, launched by accelerating it along a 200 meter incline at 1.9 meters per second squared. Uh, and that's at 35 degrees. At the end, the rocket then leaves it. The engines turn off and it's subject only to gravity. Uh, so the question asks us to find the maximum height above the ground that the rocket reaches and the rocket's greatest horizontal range beyond point A. So I'd say if you can do this question, you've kind of mastered two-dimensional um, motion and kinematics in general. So if you can do this one, you can consider yourself the master of uh, kinematics. So here's our slope. Uh, okay, this is 35 degrees and the rocket is launched. Okay, so... Uh, the, yeah okay so the rocket is launched in this direction and at this point here the engines turn off and the rocket just whoops the rocket just does you know, undergoes projectile motion from that point until it hits the ground so the question is so this is what we're labeling point a here the question is how high above the ground does the rocket is the rocket at its highest point if you like so let's go here so we're, we're wondering how high the rocket goes and we're also wondering what its horizontal range is from point, whoops, from point A. So the best, well, uh, pretty much the only way to do this question is to split it up into two parts. So the rocket's undergoing a, an acceleration as it um, runs along the ramp or as it's accelerated along the ramp. So we consider that one part of the question. So from point A here to this point here. So we're going to solve for you know the parameters of the rocket that we need to solve the second part in the first part so we'll call this and the most convenient way to do this is in the problem it just tells us what the acceleration of the rocket is so there's no need for any breaking up into components there's no need for any of that type of stuff so in part a let me just re redraw it here so instead of you know having to, to split this bit up into components what we're just going to do is call this the plus x axis so where you know our our reference axis is along the plane in which the rocket is doing its uh, accelerating business so that's going to be the our x-axis here so again start with the equation of motion that we're going to need so vx squared we're interested in what the rocket the velocity of the rocket is when it leaves the uh the ramp if you like so v naught x squared v v squared equals v naught x squared plus two times its acceleration in the x direction times x minus x naught. So let's just go back and see what more information we can get from that. So the length of the incline is something else that we need to put in there. So 200 meters is the length of that incline. So that's gonna be our x, if you like. And let me see if I can make this smaller somewhere. Or there. there we go. So the, this length here is 200 meters. Is another piece of information we can slide in there. Okay, so that leaves us now uh, ready to solve this problem. So Vx equals, well, V naught x is zero. So this term goes to zero. So we're just looking at two times the acceleration, which the problem tells us is 1.90 meters per second squared. And then x minus x naught in this case is 200, the length of the uh, ramp. So we solve for uh, Vx there, which is the velocity of the, the rocket at the end of the ramp, and we get Vx equals 27.57 uh, meters per second once we run that through our calculator. So when the projectile motion begins, so when the rocket gets to, mm, let me just put this in a different color here. So when the rocket gets to this point here, it's V is equal to 27.57 meters per second. So now we've arrived ourselves at the projectile part of the the problem so now we're just solving for a, a projectile but it's a slightly different type of projectile because the point where we're launching it from isn't ground level so the type of projectile problem that you're used to doing might be right okay we we launch it here it follows a trajectory like this and then you might say right you know find the horizontal range x and find the maximum height y but there's an extra you know tricky bit worked into this problem which is that you know our x isn't at zero because the the, the question asks us how far the, the the projectile travels 
with respect to point A. And it's also launched from a height. It's not launched from ground level. So we're, we're, we have to be a little extra careful, I suppose, doing, um, doing the next part of it. Okay, so let's just get rid of some of those uh, extra diagrams just to make a little bit of space for what we're going to do next. So let's move you over. Whoops, didn't want to do that. So let's just move this over here. Okay, so we're just going to get rid of some of this stuff and we're going to, you know, write in some of the parameters that we know and some of the parameters that, that we need to know about the projectile motion. So a new diagram just to sort of help us understand where we're at. So this is our point. Whoops, we're still on the eraser. This is our point A here. This is our uh, launch ramp again. And this is our projectile launch point here. So we'll just put a star there. So we know this is 200 meters and we know this is 35 degrees. So we know then that the, the height of, you know, that we're launching the projectile from is going to be 200 times the sine of 35 degrees. So that's the, the, the Y value, if you like, and the X value the distance from point A that the, the, the rocket has already moved before the projectile motion takes place is going to be 200 cosine 35 degrees. So let's do those calculations quickly here. So 200 sine 35 degrees gives us 114.7 meters. So we put that in here, 114.7 meters. So we're launching the projectile from 114.7 meters uh, upwards. And then in the x direction, it's going to be 200 times the cosine of 35 again. And that gives us 163.8 meters. Okay, so let's go back to our black pen here and get ourselves organized. So what do we know now about the projectile motion? And uh, let's draw a line under this. So we know. So we're going to take our coordinate system. Now we're going to change our coordinate system for the second part. So this is going to be the plus y direction. And this is going to be the plus x direction. Yeah, let's put that in there. That's important to note. So, you, you know, we can get away with doing this. We can get away with two different coordinate systems in this problem because we've split it into two separate problems and everything we're doing so far has been consistent. So the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Nothing accelerating the projectile in the x direction. The acceleration in the y direction is uh, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So we're taking um, downwards is negative in this case. So the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And uh, we're calling x equals zero at point A. So it's important to write this stuff down and just make sure that you have it clear in your mind what you're doing. And we're calling y equals zero at ground level. So we'll write that in there as well. So now we're setting the problem up in our mind so that we don't make any silly mistakes when we're solving it. And I think that's everything we need. Oh, no, the last thing we need to figure out is what is the velocity, the initial velocity in the x direction and the y direction. So V naught x then, the initial velocity in the x direction of our, our projectile. So we know that the initial velocity uh, is 27.57 meters per second. So in the x direction, then it's going to be V naught times the cosine of 35 degrees in the x direction, which is equal to 27.57. Oops, that's backwards. Let me get rid of this. 27.57 times cosine 35 degrees. And that gives us, let me just top that up there, 22.57 meters per second. 22.57 meters per second. And V naught in the y direction equals v naught sine 35 degrees. So our v naught here again is 27.57 uh, meters per second. So 27.57 sine 35 degrees. And when we calculate that out, we get 15.81 meters per second, 15.81 meters per second. And that is in the y direction. So now we know the components of our vo initial velocity in the x and y direction. Um, at projectile motion, so we need we at the maximum height. One of the key things to remember about projectile motion and figuring out how high in the y direction a projectile goes is that at its highest point, the velocity in the y direction is zero. So we'll just write that in again. 
I always write this in just to remind myself. So at max height, Vy equals zero. So how does that feed in to what we're trying to do now with our problem? So let's solve, let's, let's write the, whoops, go back to black pen and let's write out the equation again. Okay, so back uh, to black pen here, we write Vy squ uh, sorry, yeah, Vy squared equals V naught Y squared plus two ay times y minus y whoops zero so this is what's going on with our projectile in the y direction so what do we know here we know that the acceleration in the y direction is the acceleration due to gravity what we're looking to solve for here is y minus y zero so how high has the projectile uh, traveled so if we manipulate this equation to solve for y minus y zero on the left hand side we get vy squared minus v naught y squared uh, uh, over 2 times minus 9.80 meters per second squared. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, it's probably better to just write it like this for the moment. So that's actually a equal to 2ay squared. 2ay y, sorry, I mis misread what I had written down. So when we plug in the numbers then, v y squared so at the maximum height vy we said is zero so that's zero minus and the y component of the velocity is 15 the initial velocity is 15.81 meters per second and that's divided by 2 times 9.80 as i wrote down mistakenly the last time meters per second squared so when we solve that we get 12.77 that's a minus yeah we get 12.77 meters so 12.77 meters is the maximum height of our projectile. But we can't forget that we were already 114.7 meters above ground level when we launched our projectile. So the total Y value then is going to be 12.77 plus 114.7. And that rounds to 128 meters. Okay, so that's part A answered. That's that's what the question asked us for in part A. So let's just write in the fact that we've done that one. The second one then asks us for the X range of the projectile, the range of the, 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 the projectile travels in the horizontal direction. So in your projectile problems to, to calculate the range, what you need to know is simply the time that the projectile is in flight for and its initial uh, velocity in the X direction. So. How do we figure out what the um, how long the projectile was in the air for? Well, we need again just to fill in the correct equation of motion and, and solve for time. So the, the equation we're looking for at this point or for this bit is y minus y naught is equal to v naught y times t plus a half a y t squared. And you might wonder, well, we're, we're interested in the x direction. So why are we solving? You know, why is all this stuff um, got Y components in it? And the reason is that it's the Y behavior. It's the acceleration due to gravity that dictates how long the projectile is going to be in the air for rather than the X direction. So Y minus Y naught here uh, is 114.7 meters. Oh, sorry, minus 114.7 meters by the way that we have the coordinates set up. So that's the height that the projectile is launched from. V naught Y we've already calculated as well to be 15.81 meters per second and ay is minus 9.8 meters per second squared so there are the parameters we have we plug that into our equation and we get 4.90 meters per second squared so after we do the rearrangement of this equation times t squared minus 15.81 whoops that's an eight meters per second times t minus 114.7 meters. So here again, we have to use the quadratic formula to solve this one. And when we plug in the, 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 um, the numbers we need to the quadratic formula, we get the positive root gives us a t equal to 6.713 seconds. So our projectiles in the air based on solving the quadratic formula for 6.713 um, seconds. And that makes it fairly easy for us to um, figure out, you know, how far in the x direction the projectile 
travels. So x minus x naught, so we're switching to x now, equals v naught x times t plus a half ax times t squared. ax, the acceleration in the x direction, is zero, so that term disappears, and we end up with 22.57, which is the x component of the velocity, times t, which is 6.7. 1, 3 seconds and that gives us a range of a range of can I read my own writing 151.6 meters 151.6 meters but if we scroll back that 151.6 meters oops is only from this point here we need to add on the extra amount between point A and the point where projectile motion took over earlier on we figured out that was 163.8 meters so all we need to do to get from point a to the point where the projectile lands is add the two of those together and that gives us uh x then equal to 163.8 plus 151.6 uh, meters in both cases and that is 315 so when we use the correct number of significant figures and round correctly we get 315 meters for the range of the projectile and that is the answer to part b so as i was saying the you know that's a tricky problem it, it takes into account all of kinematics and it's a two-part question and you know you're the master of two-dimensional kinematics if you can solve that one so if you did congratulations